Welcome back to Tech Bed Pike. Today we're talking about Main Gear Vector Pro's 17.3 gaming laptop uh, for 2021. We've already unboxed it. I gave some initial thoughts and I've posted that video already, um, but we want to go through some benchmarking findings and bring those to you here right away. Um, I want to review the specs of this laptop. It has an Intel Core 11th Gen i7 11800H processor, RTX 3080, 16 gigabytes with 165 watt TGP, comes with a 17.3 inch 2560 by 1440 IPS 165 hertz QHD display and that's at 400 nits of brightness. And then it has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It's upgradable up to 64 gigs. And then it has the one terabyte SSD. It does have that extra bay there for another SSD for more storage. So that's fantastic. Um, I do have another 17 inch gaming laptop. It's my razor blade laptop and I did a little size comparison and weight comparison uh, between the two and as far as sizes uh, they're both very very close in size and uh, length and thickness uh, but the weight is really uh, quite there's a gap there so this came out at around four pounds 13.5 ounces and this came out the razor blade to six pounds eight point Five ounces so um, quite a difference there something to consider if you're looking at both of these 17 inch beasts so anyway uh, we got some benchmarking let's get straight into it during the initial setup of this gaming laptop we saw some significant backlight bleed on the screen that you can tell down in the lower left and right hand corner um, for me this is a little bit of a red flag um, and I would tend to probably return the unit if I saw something like that uh, or uh, exchange it for a new one. Um, if you were to go out and get this laptop, you might get lucky and not have that issue. Um, but I think it was worth uh, putting in this video for you to see. Main Gear has an application called the Node Control Center. And in here, you can manage the performance of the laptop based on what you're doing, whether it's uh, productivity or gaming. You have some general settings here. Um, you can go down. There's display settings. And then you have a four zone RGB keyboard backlighting. You can set the keyboard uh, backlighting to different colors, which is kind of cool. And then you come over here to performance. Um, you can set profiles uh, based on the type of games you might be playing. Uh, office mode, game mode, turbo mode. You have some fan settings that you control. And then you also have some overclocking uh, settings that you can uh, set based on the game that you're playing. Um, you can monitor your battery. And then you have a tab here for device information. And uh, it also comes with the Intel Graphics Command Center uh, where you can set the display uh, to based on the game that you're playing. For me, it's Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I think I have um, some other games in here. Once I go to home, looks like Red Dead Redemption. So anyway, uh, you have two applications on this laptop that you can control settings uh, based on what you're doing. Here is Main Gear's built-in 720p camera, and it's pretty grainy. Um, and there is a little bit of latency. Here's the keyboard. You can probably hear it a little bit. And then also you can compare the speaker quality as well. It's not bad. It's good for probably um, conferencing calls and Zoom calls, but after that, um, I would get an external camera and mic. Okay. So we performed some screen tests with our Spider X Pro, and we got 100% of sRGB, we got 77% of Adobe RGB, and 77% of P3. And I also want to note that this um, screen comes with 400 nits of brightness. We ran some synthetic benchmarking using 3D Mark. 
Our Time Spy score, graphic score, came out at 10,903. Our CPU score came out at 8,669. Our overall score was 10,497. And compared to online, it was just below average, the average being 11,670. We also ran Fire Strike. Our graphics score was 28,970. Physics score was 20,943, and our combined score was 7,892. Our overall score was 21,871, and compared to online, it looks like maybe there might have been a little bit of an issue there with the online score, but uh, 21,871, that's, that's really good. We ran Cinebench R23. Our CPU multi-core score came out at 8,941. And our CPU single core score came out at 1,495. As part of our synthetic benchmarking, we used Geekbench 5. Um, our single core score came out at 1,538. Our multi-core score uh, for our CPU came out at 8,672. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a bit. So we can get some more detailed scores. Here's a single core performance. And you could slow down this video so you can take a closer look at some of these uh, benchmarks. Multi-core performance. Okay, let's move on. Here's Geekbench 5 again for our OpenCL score, which was 123,364. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down so we can get some more detailed benchmarks on our OpenCL performance. Okay. We played a number of our favorite video games, um, and they were all... Uh, maxed out on ultra settings and the uh, laptop was maxed out as well and uh, we started out with cyberpunk where we were on high like i said and we were getting 50 to 60 uh, fps on average and then after that we moved on to battlefront 2 star wars and there we were getting 95 to 100 fps on average and then we moved on uh, finally to battlefield 2042 uh, and we were getting around 45 to 55 FPS on average and that was during a uh, sandstorm in game so that may have been a little bit of a factor but um, uh, it's not bad. So we're playing Battlefield 2042 and uh, this game settings are set on high along with the laptop and the fans are really kicking in here. So right now we're averaging I'd say between 57.4 and 57.8 decibels. The temperature of the laptop right around where the CPU and GPU is uh, located underneath the keyboard. We're running about 38 to about, that looks like about 38 Celsius. And then down by the palm rest, 23, 24 Celsius. about the same on the other side but right in the middle of the keyboard and below the screen it's getting pretty toasty brown right there it's right around 41 celsius we utilized our favorite in-game benchmarking tools starting with shadow of the tomb raider f1 2020 red dead redemption and horizon zero dawn the laptop was maxed out at high settings and the games were set on high as well. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, our high max FPS score was 201 FPS, average was 132 and a minimum 104. 
F1 2020, our maximum was 254 FPS, average was 218 FPS, and minimum was 168. Red Dead Redemption, we got a max of 130 FPS, average was 68, and minimum was 27. And then last but not least, our Horizon Zero Dawn score, maximum was 70 FPS, average was 40, and minimum was 27 FPS. Not bad. The Main Gear Vector Pro 17 inch gaming laptop. I really want to like this laptop, I really do. It's thin, it's light, um, it's actually very, very portable uh, for a 17 inch. There's just a number of things that uh, puts this laptop on the fence for me. Um, it, it has decent power uh, for gaming and productivity tasks and for the price, we got it for around $2,400, $2,500, and it's in there uh, with the rest of them. It did beat out some of its MSI competitors, which was interesting. Uh, there are a couple things that I don't like about it, though, um, and one of them is the mini SD slot instead of a full-size SD slot. It has one USB-C port. It's not Thunderbolt. Um, the keyboard was a little slushy. Uh, I wasn't you know, uh, very excited about that. But I don't know, I, like I said, it's very unassuming. Uh, I could see this in an office setting. You wouldn't know that it was a gaming laptop. Really, in my opinion, has lots of venting uh, to keep this laptop cool when you are playing those AAA games. So, um, so yes, I will recommend this laptop. If you're in the market for a 17 inch and you got, $2,500 to spend on a 17 inch gaming laptop, then I, I take a look at this, seriously. Um, I think it's worth the money. Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this from Tech by Pike, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it, it helps the channel, and not only that, it brings us an opportunity to bring more videos like this to you. Not only that, it gives us an opportunity to get better as we go along, and uh, for that, we thank you. We'll see you in the next one.